She became a nurse at the age of 30, which is the same age as Florence Nightingale became a nurse. And as her career progressed, she got to a point where uh, an eminent surgeon in Brussels contacted her and asked if she would like to set up a school of nursing in Brussels. When World War I actually broke out, Edith Cavill was home in Norwich. Without hesitation, she packed her bags and she set off back to Brussels. Things were rapidly changing. The Germans invaded and imposed military law on all the civilian populations. The nursing home was affected quite badly by this, and certainly at the beginning of the war, they were treating soldiers from all sides. This was very important to Edith Cavill because she believed that every man was a soldier, a father, a husband, somebody's son, and everybody should be treated just as if they were anybody else. So she imposed that ethos onto her nurses. After a short while, the school was not treating any German soldiers because the Germans set up their own hospitals on the front line. One day, two soldiers were brought to the nursing home. They were British soldiers, they were injured, and they were brought by somebody who knew Edith Cavill was a British nurse. She took them in and she nursed them in secret. And as their wounds were healing, she was thinking, what on earth can I do with these soldiers? Because if she gave them in, she knew they would either be shot or they would be imprisoned for the rest of the war. She found contacts who she trusted enough to get these soldiers to the border in Holland. And that's what happened. And she helped hundreds of Allied soldiers escape from German-occupied Brussels. The Germans had become increasingly suspicious of the activities that Edith Cavill was carrying out. One evening, late at night, there was a knock on the door and the first members of the group were arrested. A couple of days later, it was Edith Cavill's turn, the knock on the door came and she was arrested and taken to Saint-Gilles prison in Brussels. The trial of over 30 people in the resistance network lasted two days. Nobody was allowed any representation. It was brief. The verdict for Edith Cavill was treason. On the 12th of October 1915, early in the morning, Edith Cavill got up and got dressed. She was taken from Saint-Gilles prison to the rifle range in Brussels. They were stood in front of two posts. Two yellow coffins were waiting by the side of them. The firing squad stepped forward. Shots rang out and they fell to the ground. The idea for the Blanket of Poppies came when I was on my hands and knees creating a carpet of flowers and felt for an international exhibition called Floralia. I decided on 49 poppies because Edith Cavill was 49 when she was executed. So I decided I wanted 49 women to take part in this project. So we set up workshops for 49 women, not all at once. We did them in groups of about eight to 10. And it was an opportunity for those women to come together, share experiences, share stories, whilst they were creating something in remembrance of an inspirational woman and her story. I first started felting when I met an artisan felter, Eve Marshall, who has worked with me on this project. Eve has been involved with the workshops to create the poppies because she is an artisan felter, she knows the process of felting and is an excellent teacher. So I did all the sort of story side of it, uh, sorted out the food, 
set up the venue, set up the ethos and talk to women about inspiration, about Edith Cavill's story, about the freedom that we now have today. The pressure was building really because time was going on and we were getting into the time where Blanket really needed to be finished. So we sat down and I sort of just placed the poppies where they needed to be. There was no real thought in that process because that's not how I work. And we got to the point where the blanket was created because we had a date for uh, a tea party. Uh, so all the ladies could come along and have this unveiling of the blanket. <laughs> But I think for me, the overall, um, you know, the, the blanket itself is absolutely stunning. And I, and I have to be honest, I can sit here and I look, and each time I look, you know, there are different things I see in every copy. You know, you kind of think, how does this happen out of something that should be so fragile and then it's strong? It's amazing. The feeling is, I can't put into words. Mm. I just got goosebumps. It's absolutely amazing. And no just loud out until they beat at least two pieces of cake. <laughs> because I was no oh, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Come on, girls. Have you got something to hide? They your life like it's something to hide. So put on a show. Something to hide. The commemoration event was set for 7 o'clock in the morning on the 12th of October, which many people thought was too early and that we wouldn't get anybody out. Uh, but myself and Gillian Beasley from Peterborough City Council fought for that time because that was 100 years on from when Edith Cavill died, and we felt that was poignant. Peterborough and said to people, do you know who Edith Cavill is? And most people went, no. And I thought, well actually that's wrong. People should know who she is. So it was even more important that I did something on her. 